Hello everyone. Last video we were stuck with doing the equip state, but there's one more thing I forgot to mention. Now, if you go to the debug right away, and you notice in the beginning we are in idle. If I click left mouse button, we were assigning a combat status in specific. Now, I don't. How do I visualize my combat status? You see, on the left there's a combat status, but it's empty beside it. And if I click combat status now if you click left mouse button where I'm stuck in, in equip state look at my combat status status of combat in combat that means the combat status is in fact active and we will take it from here all right so let us start with the animation and how does it affect the state itself now if we go to protector you notice there was this specific array that we did not assign anything to now if you open this up it has abilities tag and that has a bunch of abilities you can assign if you want, uh, and so on okay let's discuss abilities now ability in theory exactly the same as state the only difference is it's more specific and you can more relate it to animations now do we need an equip animation well, yes. Well, you probably need an equipability as well. Okay. How do you create an, an equipability? The same way you created a state. Right click, blueprint class, character, ability. Base character ability. And let's call it blueprint underscore protector underscore equip ability. Not the state this time. Open this up. Okay. Ability gameplay tag. Very similar, right? Okay, ability dot equip. Let's call it this one. Has a cooldown? Well, not really. How many times do you equip? It's only once, right? So you don't really need a cooldown. If you need a cooldown, you can assign a specific one. How do you know if a cooldown is in progress? Get ability on cooldown. You can put this and you can perform. It has a can perform as well. Okay. Do we need the condition here? or on the state well you did it on the state so why do it here it doesn't matter okay let me delete it no one cares right okay what if i have different types of equips based on different types of conditions also oh, different types of, of situations so should i move it here probably yes okay it's not gonna harm us just a bit more work but Still does the job, right? Okay, same condition. Let me just cut this and put it here. All right. Okay, what should I do here then? Well, we can have different types of equips. So in that case, well, how do I know how many types of equips I can I'm gonna put, or where do I assign them to begin with? The answer will be here. Okay, so we have the equip. Protect care equip. All right. How do I link this one with the state? Okay, it's linked here, but how do I know if it's gonna run? When does it run? When does it check? All that. We have a we have a function called check. Uh, oh, sorry, get abilities. Get associated abilities of tag. Which, by the way, if you do get lost somewhere and you feel like there was a specific state somewhere in TCF that looks very similar I do this all the time so might as well you guys can do that too so let's check equip for a second let's cheat we have that ability so let's do it okay what does equip here do check canon associated ability of stack okay so it's very similar but it's just a different node right all right so this gives me the abilities but what does this really do why? Is this the same, fu same function? Yes. What does this do? Can perform ability in the ability component. So the ability component, which is also something we assigned here, ability system component. Okay. If it's an ability system component and it has conditions that I can check, does the state component have the same thing? Well, the answer is yes. Let me check here. I did not cover every function used in the state component can perform state same thing okay can i link this one with this one? Oh, oh i can okay 
That's another condition, another thing we can do. But other than doing this whole process, this one is already made. I mean, the, the function itself already does this whole thing for me, so why should I do it? In that case, what's the function called? Check can run. All right, check can run. List of one, which is very similar to this one. Now you know that these abilities are associated to this tag, which you can have as many tags as you want, as long as you change it, by the way, and as many list of you want. So the game progresses, the abilities change, if you have a specific, you know, uh, variable that can change, that in return will also change the things that are run on the state and so on, you can run it based on this one. Or if you have different AIs that have same exact abilities, just different tag, that also is something we can do. Alright, so let's hook this up. So, this basically... It will try to perform this state, and this state will try to run this ability. The answer would be yes. So in that case, if I try to run, look where am I? In equip ability. Okay, well, we, we did pass a point, right? Let's try again. From here. Okay. And then this is state to run. This is character state, not protector state. So. We confused ourselves, always close the things we don't need. Okay, so this one will run this one. What about this? Does it have an equip? Protector equip, yes. So this one will run from that, and that will run this one, and this one will run this one. Let's try. Okay, we're still in the player character. How do I know I got the right uh, reference? Look, over here, protector equip state. Okay, so this one should run next. It didn't, it passed it. Now the reason it passed it is because you check the ability before the state is running. You remember the state right now is trying to run an array, an array of checks. The first one it found was this one. So after this one, this one tells me it's true, so therefore the state will have to be true. And that's exactly what we got. Now since the state is true, now this one will run, right? Yes. This is how these two are combined together. So right now, what did we really change? Nothing really. Okay, is it the active? What, uh, what about the active ability? It should be the active, the new one, right? Well, yes, except that we forgot one little call. We didn't call the start state. We didn't. We didn't start the ability. So the call have to be in the state. Okay, how do I start the ability? We have a function called get selected ability, which is the one that returned the true among this array. So if we go here and we get the component, which is the ability component in this case, try perform exactly same as the state. The only difference is the name is different. It's not a state, but it's an ability. And talk this up. Okay, what about the active ability now? Look at the left. If we click, we know this one already. You didn't have to recheck again. Active ability is still to none. Let's try again. It's in equip, but it's not really running. Okay, is this running? Let's double check. It's calling. But wait a second, there's a condition here. Okay. At a breakpoint. It's false. This time it's false because we already have this tag. If you remember, the state runs the tag and then you're running it again. And you're running the check. Combat is already assigned. Okay, now we have two options. The cleanest will be to remove this check. Now let's try. This is the first to check. Let me check. Oh, active ability is equip ability. Okay, so the animation would run when? When the ability is active? You can do that, or you can do it on the state as well. Now, since we are uh, animation uh, related, 
I would prefer doing it in the ability because this will give it a more smooth feeling when it comes to inputs and other states you can run from specific states. That will be more apparent later. But for now, put this rule in your head. Animation means ability. Okay, let's do the equip montage, shall we? Back to protector, and there has to be some kind of equip animation, right? Let's do root. Okay, create and montage. Let's use this one. Let me move this to the protector folder and use this montage. Okay, how do I run a montage? There is a start ability here, that's first of all. Get the parent call, does the same as the state. There's a function called playability montage. Okay, what's the difference between playability montage and the play anim montage with a regular one from the player character? If you open this one, it basically does the same thing, except set active ability montage. So you can basically if you have a reference to the active ability, you can know the get current, sorry, get active montage, which will give you a reference to the montage that you have. That's the only difference. Okay. I can assign the montage here. Well, yes, you can. Do I recommend it? No. Why? That means the equip ability will only run with this montage that is assigned on the state which is assigned in that asset that means i cannot use the same ability because the ability runs the exact montage okay how do i go around doing this the answer is general properties general properties has montages pure ability now it's already assigned if you open it up let's add a new thing which is equip protector equip ability and it has an array if you open this up a bit intimidating but don't worry a list and an anim montage is within that list okay so i can assign it here but how do i get the ability to run this one it's very similar to the state getting the abilities it's running let's look at the equip state again it's the same basic things repeating okay player character equipability what does this really do get ability montages of tag which does the same thing almost it gets me the list of montages and then what do you do with the montages is completely up to you okay get ability montages of tag where is the thing here get ability montages of tag i already have this one it's an array but i only have one you can either get index zero or just randomize it just modify this one and assign this value to it would the equip montage now run that's a different question let's try breakpoint play left mouse button well, it's running and we had the montage let's try again it's running now we have two problems one the weapons did not go in my hand two my pose is still in common three i'm still in equipped state and ability how do i leave these two to leave it since we are controlled by an animation we can in the active we can control the change in the animation itself so we have a, a notify called end current active i was just there's two of them get ability end ability of gameplay tag that means a specific ability you want to end or just a general thing which is mostly common and current active ability okay so what happens when it ends there's a function here called end ability right let's let me let's check this this one first so you know what's going on okay get the owner get the component of it current active ability if it's active and end it okay the end active ability 
it has a function we said that is called in the indability you know if you, it's not assigned here but it's in the parent indability okay it is currently ability active this is straightforward check in our condition it will be true because we know it's true go to branch check the current active ability is equivalent to the one we are in right now and if it is assign it to none assign the active ability to none and then remove from the passive if it is it's not passive we don't care and get the active state and decide next state from the active state so it's a state so what happens by default if you try doing this debugger again it's back to none but we don't want to go to none we want to go to idle in that case go to the state and then decide next state you can call the parent if you like double check it just to be safe which literally just ends the ability what does it do does it repeat remember this is in the state not in the ability differentiate it doesn't do anything except the clear state values and whatever that function does I'll explain it later but for now we know it ends the the state but should we rely on end the state or should we just decide here I would say decide here now the reason being is because you don't know what does the state really end because sometimes you might want to do something at a specific time and whenever something ends you might want to be like if this state ends run this one and so on so you might confuse yourself so in that aspect I would say stick to a standard and be consistent so in that case let's get the state you can get this one or you can get performing actor and then get component by class which is a state manager component and so on so here try perform state of a class do not assign it directly get state of gameplay tag state.idle we know it even if you are walking or whatever you can run this one now let's let's visualize this equip character idle state that's something that's exactly what we want we don't have an active ability anymore because we ended it so this is good for now now we're returning to the first two issues we had let's start with the second problem now the second problem was my pose my pose remained in common and we want to assign a different pose we want to be in combat pose now the poses themselves were assigned on the animation blueprint if you guys recall on the very first first uh, video okay if we go here common blocking and default so we want to leave common into something else do you have other options we have combat okay is combat any different than default it probably is depending on your use case but the first thing we need to worry about is changing the current moveset you have two options here changing the current moveset that means you either call it on the ability itself whenever the animation starts or on the state up to you or in the animation itself can you make it an animation you can you can create a notify for it that's also an option for me I don't want to de depend on a notify so because in case you know I get hit while equipping my pose will remain in common and I don't want that so the moment I equip I'm automatically in that pose so let's go to the equip ability and what can we do to change the pose now when is this assigned set current moveset which is a sign moveset function okay where is this being called if you click on this one it will show you in the whole project it's in a bunch of places anything would look familiar or similar unequip maybe what do you have there anime instance and set it back to common okay what if we flip this and put it in combat let's take this one go to the state and run this one in combat what happens now nothing changed okay go to the animation blueprint and let's visualize this I'm still playing by the way well it's not really running 
Is it? Okay, in which pose are we? Let's try again. And this time, we're adding a breakpoint here. Equip. In combat moveset. We don't have a combat moveset. Let's create that. We say it's not going to be different than, the, than this one, so let's try this one and let's visualize if this is possible. Okay, let's go here. It's an idle, so this is not running. So let me take this and open it up. Oh, I'm still in common, right? I didn't equip. Let's equip. This was called. Okay, go back to the onion graph. Where are you still in idle? How do I know? This is the one running, not this. Now if I start moving, you see it's the other one running. However, the animation did change. That means if I move now, you see the in combat is actually firing. Okay, if I don't have in combat, I just have default. Let's try this time. Equip and move. It's the same thing. If in combat is not exposed as a pose, it will run the default always. So that means default is the same as in combat. Let me close this, we don't need. Okay, let's worry about this one. Targeting is when it comes to targeting. For now, don't care about this one. Just know it will be false. And we need a specific blend space for being in combat. And this time we're sending a direction of zero. Why a direction of zero? Targeting, when is this assigned? Now, if you go here and click S, you see the whole character rotating backwards towards you, the one viewing the the computer right now. If I'm targeting and I click middle mouse button, you see you see a little dot on the enemy right now. If I click S, I'm just moving backward, but my character is, is facing forward. That's because targeting boolean is being true, and we don't we need that direction in that case. However, if you're not your whole character is rotating, your direction have to be zero. It doesn't matter. Now let's us let us create a build space. And the same way we created the first one, we're gonna create the second one. However, don't make a one D, make it two D. Build the space two D protector combat player. Open this one, snap to grid on both. This one for the horizontal it will be direction minus 180 to 180 over eight divisions. We don't need more than that. The vertical will be speed from zero to 600, and we only need four divisions. We don't need more. The speed for the weight will be four. Okay, let's do idle, but not common this time, but rather in combat. In three places, I rem I notice it's 175. It should be minus 180, not 175. Oh wow, this is setting me back. So let me disable this for now. Minus 180. If this happens, just to start the engine. All right. So I did the chain. I did the start the engine, and I noticed something when I was snapping to grid, and there were two animations on the side. This would not change. So in that case, I just removed these two animations on the side, and now it changed. Now let me put it back to 80 grids and then snap. And now let's pick the animations again. Idle it was, and let's reassign those again. And now let's pick walk. But we don't need, we don't want common, we don't want defense either. So let's strafe. This is in place. We can take this one. Let's pick up the directions. Backward loop would be here. The one before the back. Let's pick back since we're already here. Back would be on the two edges. So minus 80 and 180. Backward right would be here. We don't want defense. This was three forward. Forward left would be here. Forward right would be here. Make sure it's the loop by the way, don't pick the ends. In place left and in place right. Okay, 
let's put this one and let's try now we don't need a direction for when we are not targeting so let's use this one delete this and let's be in combat show the debugger and if we start walking after equipping we notice our movement is not correct but we are in, we did in fact change the friendly space the other problem is we're too speedy for someone who's in combat okay let's fix these two issues in this case the first problem was a blend space problem because I'm walking backward in this animation and we shouldn't be so protector walk forward it should be strafe we said strafe backward here but we put strafe backward here, but we don't want this one we need the forward one so let's try this one and let's see if that fixes it equip and if we walk it seems like it yes but my speed is very bad and my common is still not as good okay the quickest would be this part we go to idle other than putting the common one let's put the other one so this is common we don't need blocking pose for now let's go with idle and let's put the one in combat how would this look like let's see equip it's not now let me check again it's because we put the common let's refix this issue and if you equip now your pose is correct okay let's, let's fix the speed problem that we have right here okay how does the speed is controlled in this case now if we go to the data asset you will notice a few things in this aspect one thing you would notice would be player speeds of property and there's few values assigned to it walking sprinting and blocking okay but how is this really used a special property with speeds in it okay we need to change our speed after we equip so that means on equip we can change the speed but how and how is this related to our use case let's find out with the sprinting now sprinting will increase my speed but how you see right here there is a sprinting speed and how is this being assigned from update speeds function which is called here and this one will take player speeds property sprinting movement speed from it okay we can do something similar so for example the special properties are assigned from the data asset we can take this one so we're taking we're checking if there's a special properties component which every character should have properties component and we loop through them until we find a specific property okay let's take this as an example let me take the whole thing and let's go to our equip so protector equip where is this at equip state here we go when we try to perform our abilities let's put this here okay but we're not gonna be useful we don't want the sprint animation right we, need, we don't need we don't want the sprint speed right in that case let me take a look at the player speeds property maybe we can add to it it has three variables but this class is instanced in this case what does instance really mean it means i can add to it and it will show here if you add any variable it will show because I don't want to change anything in the plugin and that's the rule I have so let me move over everything to let me make a copy of it copy here protector player speeds property okay let's assign this here protector player speeds property it will give you the default values now okay we want to add a new thing we said let's add 
in combat using the speed that would be a good value don't you think okay now the thing is notice we have a new variable now I can relate anything to anything with this in mind well let's say we want our move to be 150 once you equip okay let's assign the, that first it's not a player speech property, but how do I even know which one I'm getting? It's property special speeds. So if you go to this one, it has this tag, and this is not being used on the protector uh, that has it because we did replace it. So that means we can keep the same tag, no problem. But the cast will fail. Okay, cast to protector speeds property. And from this one we can take in combat movement speed. From this one we can save the value to it. Promote to a variable in combat movement speed. Let's make this a function since we want to loop through all of it. Update speed. And from here we can take the uh, get the character. Since we are in, uh, inheriting from base character, there's a character reference. Get character movement. And from here, set max walk speed. It's like what's done in the sprinting uh, state. We can take, take a look at that one for reference. I just did, that's why we got the idea of the update speed thing. Okay, let's try. Equip, and if we walk, we're still speedy. Let's take a look at the equip state and make sure that this actually did succeed run and run. So we have right this here and let's see this one here. Equip. Update speed is running. Okay. So if we continue, this is running. What's the value here? It's 150. But I'm too quick. Still. Let me show collision. I'm still too quick. Okay, does that mean my blend space isn't working as it should, or does it mean I'm still too too speedy? Let me lower the speed a little bit down. Let's go 50. Equip. Value is 15, in fact. But I'm still too speedy. Let me check my state. Oh, I'm in walking state. So that means it didn't really matter. Player walking st state is overriding my changes. Okay, what can we do in this case? Since walking is still happening after equipping, and walking has its own values being set here, what can we do to it? So let me first put my speed to 150. Since that didn't make a change, changing it won't matter, right? In that case, let's go straight. Let's go to walking, walking state, and you might wanna change that one. Walking state. Here we go. And this one is being set from update speeds function. Same thing. And it's setting it to 450, was it? 450. But you don't wanna run it to 450 when you are in combat. So we're gonna have to change the walking state. And to do that, very simple. Move it here, copy, protector, player walking state, and assign that instead of this one. Now, why did we create a, a change in here? Because we want to check here if we are in combat or not. Plus, we don't need this one anymore. So we can cast to player protector player speeds. Also, since we did it change the, the thing, even sprinting will not work right now because it has the same thing. So in that case, rather than copying the one we did, just inherit from it. So player speeds property. Yeah. And you notice we did get these zeros, we don't need those anymore. Now, the sprinting will work because this is still inheriting from 
the original one so the casting will be will be successful but we don't need we still need to override and get the combat speed so combat speed and walking movement speed we have these two but how do you distinguish if we are in combat or not we had this after the equip if you remember we had get combat so we get performing actor get component by class the combat component and if we have combat status hashtag in combat if we are in combat we know our speed right let's just assign to it if we are in combat assign the value we want to this one in combat speed if not assign a different value which is the 450 now if we compile and try that will make sure that it's assigned here now just by walking without equipping we are in 450 if you equip and you walk notice how slow i am that means my speed did go down now is it the right speed you're looking for that's completely up to you for me i'm gonna increase this a little bit to something like 250 equip move sounds better to me at least okay in this case we still have one more issue to fix which is the equipping of the sword and since this video is already too long i'm gonna cut it and put it on a different different part so see you guys in the next one